Hi YouTube, welcome back. This session we're going to be looking at some of the CSS skills that we've learned in previous sessions including the interactivity stuff and applying those to the photo gallery that we've been making in HTML. As usual, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below and if you have any questions leave them in the comments. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to open up the uh, project that we had before and go to index.html. Now it should look like this. If it doesn't look like this then it's probably worth going through the HTML tutorials earlier in this series. Um, there's a link at the top uh, that we'll make available. And the full functionality that you have should allow you to have all of the pictures and to cycle both left and right through them all, thus turning in a circle. Now, today we're going to add some styles to our page. The first thing we need to do is to create a link to the CSS file that we're going to be using. I'm calling ours main.css. Once we've got that, we actually need to create the file. So right click on the left hand side and create main.css. The first thing to do would be to add a background color for the body. Uh, to do that, or to, to add a style for any element, you can just simply put the name and then curly braces. And in this case, we'll set background color equal to black. So if we save that, go back to index.html, click on the live preview, and we can see we now have a black background. This is unfortunate because we now can't see the text, which was also in black. So we should go back to main.css and add color white. Note American spelling all the way throughout. Save that file, go back to index.html, click on live preview again. And now we see our uh, text is now white, so we can see that again. Next up, we're going to need to style our various things. Uh, so to do that, let's add a class to the header. Called header text. Copy that into main.css. Now it's a class, so we have to reference it using a dot. And we can now change something like the font family. And let's also make it 100% of the width, and also to align the text to the center. Do that using text align center. Again, make sure you have American spelling, so it's E-R, not R-E. Now we can check that by reloading index.html. Bear in mind in brackets, you'll have to actually select the file that you want to live preview if you want to live preview it. But now we can see the text is in Arial font and also in the center. Next up, we'll center the image. We'll do that by creating a div. Let's give it an ID this time. So we'll give it an ID of main image. And then make sure that the other tag uh, the end tag of the div goes the other side of the image. And as is good convention, uh, indent anything that's nested inside another HTML tag. So we'll take this and go back to main.css. We're referencing by ID, so we need a hash to start with, then the name of the element, and we can just simply put text align center again, because we're centering everything inside the div. If you've left live preview loading, you should just be able to load up the page again, and you can see it's now centered the image. You can also access elements within elements. So in this case, we can take main image and then put a space and then the name of the element that we want to uh, alter. Now we can set the border radius on this to be 10 pixels. That should give us a nice rounded corner on the image, which it has done. Now, at the moment, the buttons need a bit of work. So we'll go back to index.html and add uh, a div around all of them to be the button container. Oops. Call this class equals button container. And now we want to style the elements inside. To do that, we also want to keep the link. So we're going to add a div inside the A tags. Give that a class of button. Because it's a class, we can reuse that later on. Now 
Now that we have our class, let's give it some styles. We'll go back to main.css. And let's use a hex color this time. So to do that, we'll go and pull up a uh, hex color picker, which we can find by Googling. And you can see Google has its own one built in there. Let's take a nice bright color. Um, let's go with this a slightly off yellow. And we can see it gives us the hex value here. So we can copy that and paste it back into our project and put a semicolon on the end. Now, when we re refresh the page, we can see that it's added that background in there. Still a little bit to go. First thing we want to do is to make the buttons sit next to each other. And the way that we can do that is we can change the display to inline block. And you'll see now this has caused the buttons to sit next to each other on the page. We can also remove the pipe from the middle as we don't need to separate them anymore. They'll separate naturally. But if we check our page, we can see that it's not it's already enough. So let's let's give them a bit more. So we'll add in a margin left of 20 pixels. And that pushes them apart a bit. We'll also probably want to center the text. Uh, so we can do that the same way that we have done before. We can do text align center. And we'll also want to center it in the vertical as well. So to do that, we can set the line height equal to the height of the button. This is the easiest way to do this here. Um, and if we refresh, we can see that it puts the text in the middle there. And the underline has also gone. Let's uh, make the color black rather than purple. You can see that gives us, when we refresh, a much nicer looking button. So also probably worth sticking with the theme of the page, which is to have rounded corners. So let's make the border radius 10 pixels to match the image. And we'll refresh the page, and we can see it's added that nice rounded corner for us. So the buttons also need to be in the center. Um, so we'll do that by taking a reference to the button container. And we'll stick that above button. And putting text align center again. Now, refresh the page, and we'll see them in the middle. Because they're links, they automatically have the uh, pointer going over, but then currently not changing state when we hover over them. So in order to do that, we'll need to add in dot button hover. And let's make this, um, let's go back to our color picker. and choose a slightly lighter yellow. Don't forget the hash in front of a hex color. And now when we refresh the page, when we hover over them, they change color. Next thing to do is to add a border in uh, to the image. So let's put that in. We do that by writing border, solid, uh, let's make it five pixels and give it a color of, uh, let's say, slightly off white. Now, because brackets tries to help us out by drawing lines around certain elements that we have selected, live preview can actually be a bit tricky to use here. So we'll turn that off and instead go to the file that we have. That's here. Double click on it and it should load up in a browser for us like this. And we can see we've got that nice border around our image there. We, we also notice when we're on the page, if we click left, we'll go to a page that's completely unstyled. So all we need to do now is to draw up the CSS on the other pages. So let's have a go at doing that now. Go back to 2.html. The easiest way is to copy and paste all of the HTML from index into 2, put it underneath. And then we just need to make sure that the 
all of the relevant items match. So the title needs to be replaced with the title, the image name needs to be replaced as well, and also the uh, links to the other pages. So three and index. Once we've finished doing that, we can remove all of the original HTML and go back to our page, go back to one HTML, hit left, and then we can see we've just applied our styles the same way. And that's all it takes to roll out all of our changes to every other page. So let's do that now. Don't forget, on 8.html, we need to link to index and not to number 9. And there we go. So when we're finished, go back to index.html. And we can go, let's go the other way this time, right through each of our images, making sure the styles have been applied to every page. Now, for instance, if we wanted to uh, change one of the styles, say we wanted to change the font family on the button, for instance, we only need to change it in one place. So we can do that by going to main.css, to the button, and set that to Arial, nice sans serif font. And now, when we move to the next page, we can see we've got the Arial applied to every single page. And that's the power of CSS. We can make a change in one place and it changes it across all of our pages. And that's it. Uh, hopefully you've learned some good CSS tricks and how to apply it to an HTML page that you're trying to style. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, check out our other videos on how to use JavaScript and apply that to a page. Uh, we're also running a live stream um, and the videos for that will be put up after they've been streamed. We're making a game in JavaScript. Uh, so look forward to seeing you there. Thanks very much for stopping by. See you next time.